Hello and welcome statisticians to your very first video lesson. Isn't it exciting? I uh, am Miss Cowan. Hopefully you know that. And you should have in front of your little peepers this nice note sheet to fill in. I do two column notes because you can hide one side and use it as a study tool later. So let's get right into the nature of probability and statistics. Now we've already had a couple videos that show you how statistics can be used in real life and you created a little project already, but we're gonna get into the definitions and the vocabulary. So today we wanna demonstrate the knowledge of statistical terms and we also wanna differentiate between the two branches of statistics statistics. See, it's a tongue twister. We all get tripped up on that. So how do most people become familiar with probability and statistics? We've already examined some of those. Radio, TV, newspaper, magazines, the internet, they have all, they quote those all the time. And here's an example. Cell phones, should they be allowed? Of course they should. They're cool as heck. But uh, they, they did a research poll, and here's a, an example of statistics in a paper. A Pew Research study showed that 65% of cell-owning teens at schools that completely ban their phones bring them to school with them anyway. So it doesn't really help, over half the people do. But this is the kind of thing we see in articles of statistics. How do they get it? They do a study or a survey, and they monitor what those responses are. Here's uh, St. Louis Cardinals Yachty. He got hurt. He's out. Anyway, I miss him in the games. Yachty Air Molina. Now, this was last year's stats, but it shows his batting average and different things like that. All kinds of stats. It helps them predict if he's going to be a good player or not. And they do all kinds of data gathering on our athletes. It helps the other team figure out how to pitch to him. It helps to know whether they should walk him or what. So stats are everywhere. Birth defects. Here's another example. Ten leading causes of infant birth deaths. deaths. And you see there's a nice bar graph uh, to display the information to really hit home that birth defects, that's the number one cause. In what field do people use statistics? All of them. Almost all fields, sports, public health, operations research, scientific research, insurance, and so on. Name three examples that statistics can be used in various applications. So you might come up with your own, but the three I came up with was a baseball player's batting average, the rate at which people contract a virus or disease, which is kind of helpful. You know, have you heard about the Ebola virus that's coming? I mean, that's kind of scary. And by city planners to determine how in where to expand highways and increase public transportation. These are just three examples, but there are so many areas that statistics can be used. What is statistics? It's the science of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from data. They get the studies, they do the surveys, they collect the data, and they do all this stuff with the data. What are the three reasons that students study statistics? to understand statistical studies in their field, may be expected to conduct research in their field and be able to draw conclusions, and to use knowledge to become better consumers and citizens so you don't get the wool pulled over your eyes. People will use statistics to try to convince you of different things, and you have to know whether it, they're misusing the data or it is a true representation of the facts. Like, we can kind of trust the weather guy. Descriptive and inferential statistics. What is a variable? You already know what a variable is, but in statistics, it's a character or attribute that can assume different values. Just like you knew, like, X could assume different values in that in algebra, that's what it is in statistics. Where are data? Okay, you notice they say, where are data? I always get the grammar wrong on this. Data is a plural word, but you will hear me say, is data. Just forgive me and know that I'm ignorant, and I should be saying, are data. The values, measurements, or observations that the variables can assume. That's the data. The values, measurements, or observations that the, data, the variables can assume. What are random variables? Variables whose values are determined by chance. What is a data set? A collection of those values that a variable can assume. What do you call each data set? Data element or datum? That could be a Jeopardy question. The one word that it represents the value of a data set, datum or data element. 
what are the two main areas of statistics called and what do these two areas consist of? Well, we've got descriptive statistics, which is the collection, organization, summarization, and presentation of data. And we've got inferential, which is the big kahuna. Consists of generalizing from samples to populations, performing estimations and hypothesis tests, determining relationships among variables, and making predictions. Uses probability to make inferences or draw conclusions from samples to populations. So they do a small sample and see if it's true for that, and they said, oh, if it's true for this small sample, it's tr true for the whole population. What is the difference between a population and a sample? Well, the population is everybody, and a sample is just a part, a group taken from the whole population. Hypothesis testing is a decision-making process for evaluating claims about a population based on information obtained from samples. In what noted study in 1964 did the statisticians use statistics to determine that a relationship existed between two variables? In 1964, they did a huge study, Smoking in Health. Have you heard that song? Puff, puff, puff that cigarette. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. It's an actual song, and it was a hit song. I'm just, you know, trying to educate you. But smoking and health, they determined uh, that it was bad for you. Everybody knows that. Insurance rates would be increased for those who choose to smoke, as there is a greater risk that they will die sooner. So the insurance companies, they try to make some money, honey. They don't want to be paying out more than they're taking in. So if they notice, hey, smoking causes people to die quicker, then they're going to up your insurance if you're a smoker. How could this relationship be used in making healthy life choices? Ah, uh, we all love the healthy life choices. Oh, uh, we love you, Michelle Obama. One could choose not to smoke to reduce the risk of developing lung cancer. One thing I would like to see is a study on smoking marijuana because it's supposedly much, much worse for you than smoking a cigarette because with marijuana you don't have a filter. Just saying. All right, well, that's it. That's your first notes. I know you had to pause and do the definitions. I hope you liked this format, and I will see you tomorrow.